Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you uh, for the invitation here today to present uh, the findings from the Genesis study. Um, and this study was about predicting cesarean delivery in the term nulliparous woman. Um, I suppose one of the main reasons we embarked on this study was the fact that labor dystocia, or difficult childbirth, is a very common problem encountered by midwives and obstetricians on an almost daily basis. It's a problem experienced almost exclusively by humans and can lead to potentially devastating complications. The theory behind labor dystocia originates from anthropologists who explain that over millions of years that our upright stance and our larger brain volumes have led to a situation where the human pelvis uh, lacks capacity in certain instances for childbirth. Unfortunately, the reality of modern society looks a lot more like this. In the last 50 years, there's been a dramatic uh, societal and dietary change uh, where we see unprecedented levels of obesity, increased sedentary lifestyles, and women are delaying childbirth for various different reasons. And this has had a very obvious effect on obstetric outcomes. We now have a situation where one in three, every three women in the US uh, is delivered by cesarean with labor dystocia implicated in about 60% of cases. We do know that timely intervention can reduce harm and we know from the developing world that women who don't have access to uh, midwifery and obstetric care uh, still continue to have a huge rates of mortality and morbidity associated uh, with their lack of access to uh, intervention with cesarean delivery. We do know um, from the evidence that cesarean without um, labor carries less risk than operative vaginal delivery, and it carries less risk than a cesarean in labor or at full dilatation. Lots of people have tried to predict cesarean. They've used various different methods. Um, and really, um, despite all of this research, uh, and, we, and costly different interventions that have been um, uh, put in place, we still don't really understand which women will suffer the greatest difficulties in childbirth. So the hypothesis for our study, the Genesis study, was that using maternal measurements, fetal measurements, in nulliparous women, we may be able to predict an unplanned cesarean delivery. In this primary analysis of the Genesis study, our objective was to prospectively assess the use of prenatally determined maternal characteristics, clinical and, fetal, uh, clinical and fetal ultrasound features to develop a predictive tool for unplanned cesarean in the nulliparous woman prior to the onset of labor. This was a prospective observational blinded study carried out by perinatal Ireland across seven clinical sites. Uh, it was carried out between October 2012 and uh, finished up in June 2015. All nulliparous women in an uncomplicated pregnancy were un invited to participate. Perinatal data was collected at their initial prenatal visit, including measured weight and height, and a research ultrasound was performed to obtain routine fetal biometry between 39 weeks and 40 plus 6 weeks gestation. Uh, the most important feature of this study was that clinicians, midwives, and the participants alike were all blinded from the ultrasound-derived fetal biometry. And this was to limit the effect of the estimated fetal weight influencing the timing and mode of delivery. Other standard perinatal and obstetric data was collected contemporaneously. We had a total of 3,660 women screened for recruitment. 24% of these either declined to participate, were ineligible, or delivered prior to the research ultrasound. 2,772 were recruited, and again, we had 3% lost due to missing data, and 10% were excluded because they had a clinically indicated ultrasound after 34 weeks gestation. We felt that they were unblinded to the estimated fetal weight. We had 2,392 analyzed, and 2% were excluded after pre-specified exclusion criteria, which left us with 2,336 participants. So the mean age of the women in this study was 29, BMI of 24, uh, ethnicity the vast majority of white European descent, and the type of care was evenly divided between obstetrician and midwife provided care. 
Almost 60% of the women went into spontaneous onset of labour, with 41% induced. Uh, Post-AIDS induction and prolonged rupture of membranes were by far the most common reason for induction of labour in this cohort. 42% had a normal vaginal delivery, and the cesarean delivery rate was 21% overall. 37% had an operative vaginal delivery, and 68% had a, a, an epidural during labour. The cesarean delivery rate did vary from the different sites included in the study, from 14% up to 25% across the seven centres. Overall in Ireland, at during this, this study, uh, the caesarean section rate is 28%, but that's a very crude rate, including all of the different Robson groups, whereas really our study focused on Robson group one and group two. So we performed a univariate analysis on 37 different factors to identify risk factors associated with caesarean delivery. Um, those associated with an increased risk of caesarean delivery are presented in this table. These include maternal age, maternal height, maternal BMI, maternal head circumference, a family history of caesarean delivery, the presence of a birth plan, fetal head circumference over the 90th centile, fetal abdominal circumference, and an estimated fetal weight. Each potential continuous variable was analyzed in this to determine the cutoff or category which inferred the greatest risk of caesarean. For example, here, maternal age over 35 or maternal height under 160 centimetres. These nine factors were then used to determine the best combined predictor, predictors of an unplanned caesarean delivery in the nulliparous woman using a multivariate logistic regression analysis and using different mathematical prediction modelling. Five parameters were identified as the most important to consider in the overall estimation of risk for caesarean delivery in the term nulliparous woman. These are advancing maternal age, shorter maternal height, increasing maternal BMI, increasing fetal head circumference and increasing fetal abdominal circumference. And you'll note that estimated fetal weight uh, was no longer as a useful predictor as these five uh, factors. The continuous predictors in this analysis were all standardized using Z scores uh, to transform the data. And the odds ratios represented here actually correspond to one standard deviation increase in a predictor. So to display these results, or I suppose make them more usable in clinical practice, uh, we uh, created this nomogram. And this nomogram is constructed from all of the different regression coefficients using a statinomalog program. The discriminative ability of this uh, model, or I suppose risk assessment, um, uh, of the prediction model was quantified using a rock analysis, and the area under the curve is 0 0.8, which would be considered a very good um, probability or predictive risk assessment. In this, each characteristic is weighted according to the relative effect the characteristic has on the risk of caesarean delivery and is represented very well here. For example, um, in this model, you can see that age um, is weighted far less than height, and height has the, by far the biggest influence on the risk of caesarean in this. So to demonstrate the clinical usefulness, uh, I'll talk you through an example. Uh, this is a fairly typical patient, a 34-year-old with a BMI of 25, a height of 160 centimetres, fetal head circumference of 340, and a fetal abdominal circumference of 360. Uh, using the nomogram, then you can transfer the, the, um, uh, and the standard deviations and the means, you can transform that data into Z-scores. And using those Z-scores, then, you can uh, include each of the individual risk scores into the nomogram. You add all of these different risk scores together to give you a total risk score, which in this study confers a 38% risk of caesarean delivery. So to just take two examples from our cohort, um, we, um, the first is a 34-year-old lady, uh, and we developed this risk calculator simply to make it more user-friendly that you don't have to take out a piece of paper with a nomogram, work out the Z scores. The uh, risk calculator is developed from a statistical package called OR, where you just type in the numbers and it, and it gives you the, the, the risks uh, evaluation. So we have two examples here, a 34-year-old, height of 180, 
BMI of 24, fetal head circumference 336, and fetal AC of 371. And she had a risk of 8%, and in fact went on to have a normal vaginal delivery. And in the second case, we have a 32-year-old, height of 163 centimetres, BMI of 37, fetal head circumference of 364, which would be quite large, a fetal abdominal circumference of 360, quite uh, average, um, and she had a 54% chance of caesarean, and in fact did go on to have uh, an intrapartum caesarean section. To test our um, prediction model, we performed a bootstrapped cross-validation study that showed that the training data set of 200 participants had a similar performance to the test data set with the ROC, or the rock curve analysis, showing equivalent area under the curve. So how um, do the predicted probabilities compare with the actual rates uh, observed? And we compared these. You can see here that the actual caesarean delivery rates are almost exactly as predicted in the different risk categories. In the cohort of 614 women who had a 20 to 30 percent risk of caesarean, the actual rate was 26 percent. Um, to take a closer look at the really high risk group, so um, this reflects 2 percent of our entire Genesis uh, cohort, which I think actually is um, a, a strength of this study that really of these low risk women who presented at 39 weeks gestation in an uncomplicated pregnancy, really this study only identified out 2% who were actually at an exceptionally high risk of uh, intrapartum caesarean section. Uh, we can see, we looked at all of these outcomes in these 52 women, and we saw they have 56% caesarean section rate, but the rest of the women then actually had a 28% instrumental delivery rate, they had a 15% spontaneous vaginal delivery rate, a 9% um, obstetric anal sphincter injury, and then there was a birth injury of a fractured clavicle. Uh, in total, only 7 out of these 52 women had an uncomplicated spontaneous vaginal delivery. So, I suppose... Um, while the prediction model is entirely based on the risk of caesarean delivery, we know that a high risk result or certainly suggests that this would also give us some information on the potential, other potential adverse outcomes in labour. So I suppose to conclude, we have five important parameters um, which um, can help us um, assess the risk of caesarean delivery. Um, and these are all routinely available parameters. Um, advancing maternal age, uh, increasing maternal BMI, shorter maternal height, larger fetal head circumference, and larger abdominal circumference. And these are all obtainable uh, in the antenatal clinic. So in future, um, I think that this uh, prediction model will be very helpful for providing women with informed uh, choice uh, that it may be useful as part of the national maternity strategy where we're going to have different types of birth centres and maybe uh, aiding in decision making around place of birth. Uh, I suppose ideally we'd love to perform a future randomised control trial using this prediction model to see can we actually um, reduce maternal and neonatal by morbidity by selecting out those women who are at high risk of complication and avoiding an in, a difficult intrapartum caesarean section. And it may also be useful to look at validating the use of this prediction model in other cohorts of women, such as those who maybe want to pursue a vaginal birth after caesarean, or um, in high-risk pregnancies, such as the diabetic population you heard about earlier, uh, or as a post-dates evaluation for women who are trying to make that decision and we're trying to time uh, uh, the mode of delivery. So, uh, I'd like to acknowledge all the different people who were involved in this uh, Genesis study carried out by Perinatal Ireland. Uh, there um, is a dedicated team of sonographers, managers, statisticians and uh, obstetricians in uh, seven different centres who gave me help with this study and also the Health Research Board of Ireland for providing funding. Thank you. Thank you.